All right, let's jump right into it. You've seen the graph in the thumbnail. You probably want to know what it means. Well, here it is. These are the results from a research study called The Honeymoon is Over, Sex Differentiated Changes in Sexual Desire Predict Marital Dissatisfaction. This is actually the amalgamation of two different longitudinal studies done over approximately four years. And what they were tracking is changes in sexual desire after marriage and as it relates to gender. If you want to read the study for yourself, there's a link down below, so you can check that out. So here you've got the solid line, that's the men, and the dotted line is women. And as you can see, the men start off with a much stronger desire for sex, and it actually increases over time. For women, there's a sharp decrease. So the longer that the marriage goes on, they experience less desire for sex. Now, lots of men want to know why this is, because it bothers them. They want to have the same sex drive as their partner. They want to be happy in their sex life, but they're not. You know, men and women are different. And so they want to know why, what's going on here? You know, why do women lose their desire as time goes on after marriage. After all, when they're dating and it was just like boyfriend and girlfriend, they were having lots of sex, but now suddenly they're married and it's no longer a girlfriend, it's a wife and they're not having sex anymore. A lot of men actually feel, you know, tricked or manipulated in some way, like they were sort of led into a relationship with false expectations. I have answered this question so many times, lots of frustrated men reaching out to me dissatisfied in their sex life saying, What's going on? Why doesn't my wife want to sleep with me? Why is my long-term girlfriend not interested in sex anymore? Is she not attracted to me? Is she having an affair with somebody else? What's going on? It really rocks guys' self-esteem. When their girlfriend's not initiating, you know, not interested in sex, it makes them feel undesirable, not good for their self-worth. By the way, if you have a question for me or you need advice, you can reach out to me on Hey Hero. Tell me a story, I'll send you a personalized video in response. Anyway, drawing from the results of this study, I'm going to give the three reasons in this video why women's desire for sex decreases after marriage. But first, welcome to my couch where I sit and I relax and I watch TV. Recently, I've been watching Ozark and season six of Vikings, but sometimes I do not want to watch intense drama. I just want some zone out TV and I love cartoon comedies. I love Bojack Horseman, Rick and Morty, even old episodes of The Simpsons. Recently, I was in the mood to watch some episodes of Family Guy, but Netflix Australia doesn't feature that TV show. Luckily, Surfshark VPN, the sponsor of this video, came to the rescue. You see, with Surfshark VPN, they have 3,200 different servers in 65 different countries. You just select the one that you want, and as far as the internet knows, boom, you're there. So I selected Toronto in Canada, went onto my Netflix, and suddenly I can watch Family Guy. Whenever there was a movie that I wanted to watch, if Australian Netflix didn't have it, I would go onto YouTube and I would individually purchase that movie, but it got expensive. Now, with Surfshark VPN, I just find the country that features that movie. It saved me so much money. Surfshark has already paid for itself. It's a wonderful product. I've been using it for over a year. You know what a VPN does. It blocks cookies, it blocks ads, it encrypts all of your data. It gives you complete privacy and anonymity online. But it also saves you money. If you're booking flights or hotels, if you pretend you're from another country, you can often get massive discounts. It really works. If you use the code Alexander Grace, Surfshark VPN will give you an 83% discount and you'll get three months extra completely for free. This service even comes with a 30 day money back guarantee. Surfshark VPN, financially, it is the sensible choice. Okay, back to the video. Let's begin by answering the question, why doesn't men's desire for sex go down over time? Previous studies have shown that sexual desire is strongly correlated with testosterone levels, but also that men's T levels tend to drop the longer they're in a relationship. And so wouldn't it make sense if men have less testosterone, why doesn't their sexual desire go down? And what about the Coolidge effect? You know, that idea that men, men's sexuality is strongly linked to novelty. You know, the more variety they have in their sexual partners, the more sexual they're going to feel. But if it's just the same woman again and again and again, shouldn't their sexual desire be decreasing? My answer to that is that perhaps those two factors do decrease male sexual desire. But even with the two of them combined, it's not enough to override one of the central driving instincts for male sexuality, at least from an evolutionary perspective, which is to the protection against cuckoldry. That is one of the main reasons why men are incentivized to sleep with their partners again and again over a long period of time. I've already done a video on why human beings are extremely rare. They're one of just a tiny handful of species on this planet that have evolved the bizarre mechanism where their females actually conceal their ovulation. 
So if you want to know the answer to that, go and check out that video. I'll put a link down below. Spoiler alert, it's so that women can cheat on their partners and get away with it. So they can commit paternity fraud, you know, have sex with one man and, you know, get the children raised by another. But yeah, check out the video if you want to see that one. But given the female capacity for infidelity and dishonesty, men, as a way of kind of combating that, developed this really strong you know, constant sexual desire, because if they're frequently copulating with their partner, you know, they're always having sex with them, it protects against paternity uncertainty because it increases the likelihood that any children that she bears are going to be his. Quick side note, in one of my recent Patreon videos, I made the case for mandatory paternity testing for all newborn babies at hospitals to protect against paternity fraud, something I feel very passionate about. If you want to see that video, check out my Patreon. But regardless of the reasons, we already know the reality. Individual exceptions aside, for the most part, men want sex all the time. And even though they've been married to their partners over a long period, they still, you know, want to have like a lot of sex. The question really is, well, why aren't women the same? You know, why is there this gender mismatch? So let's talk about that. Drawing from the study, I've got three reasons I'm going to discuss. First is stress. Second is limited reproductive capacity. And third is having achieved success already in pair bonding. That last one's probably the most important, but let's start with stress, okay? So it's no secret that in order to feel sexual, to have a good sex life, you need to be calm, you need to be relaxed. The stress chemicals like cortisol are absolutely terrible for your libido. It's one of the reasons why men who have a psychologically induced erectile dysfunction need to focus on relaxing, you know, get more sleep, get more calm inside themselves, because all those Brain chemicals caused by the stress, that's just terrible for your boners. Now, according to the study, there is some evidence that numerous challenges associated with marriage, not the least of which is birth and child rearing, often burden women more than men. So women are feeling more stressed by the burdens of marriage than men are. That doesn't surprise me. And it's not because men don't get stressed. But if you tend to ask men, you know, what is it that's causing you stress? You know, often they'll talk about their own personal achievements, you know, how they're doing at work. You know, it's about them as an individual. Now I'm not praising men there. I think that men should probably make more of an effort to get more stressed and more involved in the difficulties associated with their relationships. But that's just how the genders kind of are as a generalization. You know, men are concerned about themselves as an individual, but the health of the relationship is more keenly tracked by the woman. And so things to do with their marriage and, you know, the strength of their relationship, you know, children, those, those shared activities and bonds, you know, she's highly attuned to those and she's feeling the stress. Of course, the biggest stress felt by women is pregnancy, childbirth and child raising. And it's stressful in a way that is unique to women. Reading directly from the study, the birth of children did not predict declines in husband's sexual desire in any of the analysis. In contrast, the birth of children was significantly associated with declines in wives' sexual desire in all three analysis. Now, human beings are intensely social creatures and we use sex as a means of cementing social bonds. That's really important. And I'm going to talk about that next. But as much as we have found, you know, social uses for the sexual act, we can't escape the fact that fundamentally we are biological organisms and that the, the, the biggest purpose for sex is reproduction. That's why we've been incentivized to make love. At a core level, we want to have children and pass on our genes to the next generation. But here's the thing. Men and women have vastly different reproductive capacities. And it shouldn't surprise anybody that that has a huge impact on the level of desire that we feel. Men can have so many children, you know, because we, we create so much sperm. Really, the only limit to how many children you can have as a man is based on your stamina and how many women you can seduce. You've probably heard that incredible statistic that one in 200 people today can directly trace their ancestry to Genghis Khan. You think, well, how's that possible? But consider it for a moment. This guy conquered like a quarter of the world and everywhere he traveled, he had lots of sex. He probably had more children than anybody could have possibly counted. And that number of children, that's just something that a woman would never, ever be able to do. Reading from the study, although a primary function of sexual desire is reproduction, women are more limited than men in the number of offspring that they can produce. It takes nine months to grow a baby, and that takes a massive toll on your body. Childbirth can be dangerous, and even after the child comes out, they are dependent upon you for years. 
reproductively, there's just a hard limit as to what a woman can actually do. So if your wife has children early on in the marriage, her body is going to respond, you know, with that awareness, go, whoa, 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 we need to slow down here. I can't handle, you know, too much more of this. I'm already kind of at my limits, you know, I'm not strongly incentivized to have lots of sex because part of me is terrified. I don't want to have more children right now. I think that would overwhelm and kill me. Yes, we do have contraception today, but we didn't evolve with them. For hundreds of thousands of years, we didn't have condoms or the pill. And so our instincts are still left over from that time period. And when you see women's desire for sex naturally drop off after marriage, after children, it's because she's become aware of her own limitations and her, her mind, her instincts, her desires, they just naturally respond to these new circumstances. But now let's talk about the last reason why women experience a decrease in sexual desire, because in my opinion, it's the most interesting one. I hope this doesn't shock anybody when I say this, but one of the primary reasons why women have sex with men is to induce a commitment from him. Reading directly from the study, Recent perspectives suggest that extended sexuality functions to help women gain and maintain investment from men. In other words, if a woman can keep a man happy in bed, then she's going to inspire him to remain committed to her. You could bring this back to paternity certainty. So if a woman is making herself available for sex all the time, then it increases the likelihood that any children she has are going to be his, which therefore makes him want to commit to her more. So there it is. One of the big motivations that women have for having sex with men is to induce commitment from him, you know, to inspire loyalty, to create that pair bond. You often see this play out at the beginning of a relationship when the woman just seems inflamed by passion. You know, she's, you know, desiring sex all the time and they're doing it, you know, many, many times every single week, often, you know, more than once a day. And the guy's like, oh, this is great. But do you see that's, that's just a temporary circumstance because she's trying to create you know, a pair bonding experience. She's, you know, merging physically with you because she's hoping it's going to have that same impact psychologically so that the two of you, you know, stop thinking of yourselves as separate individuals and more as a couple, more as a team. So it makes sense then that if a woman gets the impression that the, the commitment is fading, that the pair bonding is not as strong as it used to be, she may resort to having more sex with him to try and get more commitment out of him. And unsurprisingly, that's exactly what the science shows. Reading from the study, consistent with such perspectives, recent research suggests that women are more likely to engage in sex outside of their fertile window when they perceive that their partners are relatively low in their investments into the relationship. So that's not sex when she's ovulating, you know, it's not being motivated by her desire to have children. This is conscious sex that she's having outside of that fertility window because she's trying to create more commitment, more pair bonding. <laughs> but do you see then that if it's one of her motivations to have sex with a man to get him to commit more, inversely, if she already has his commitment, if she's confident in their pair bonding and in his loyalty, then that is naturally going to create a decrease in her sexual desire for him. Why would she keep sleeping with him? They've already pair bonded. She's already achieved her purpose. This perspective also suggests women's desire may decline more than men's as interdependence grows over time, because it may be less critical for women to maintain high levels of sexual desire as men grow more invested over time. So now you know. I mean, you're probably already aware that women experience less desire for sex after marriage, but you know the reasons. Stress, uh, limited capacity to create more children, and she's already achieved success in commitment and pair bonding. Now, when I read the conclusion of this study, I knew instantly that it was how I wanted to end this video because the researchers just put it so well. So let's see what they had to say. Although childbirth predicted declines in women's but not men's sexual desire, and thus accentuated sex-differentiated declines, even couples who remained child-free over the course of the study showed a divergence of sexual desires. We suspect many couples see this as a sign that their marriage has serious problems, for which they may blame themselves and each other. Insofar as neither couple member anticipates this issue, both may come to feel that their partner is changing the marital expectations. Our findings might reassure some couples that the emerging mismatch in marital sexual desire is normal and typical. It is thus possible that a greater societal recognition of the typical emerging mismatch in spousal sexual desire may lead to greater acceptance and understanding for some couples, 
and thereby a reduction in marital discord. Of course, what is typical is not necessarily good, especially when one considers the role of individual differences in relationship processes. And couples who remain distressed by mismatches in sexual desire may benefit from interventions that specifically address this issue. This is not a video to shame women and say like, oh, look how horrible they are for not sleeping with their husbands more. It's not at all what this is about. If you want to do that kind of thing, go to one of the other hundreds or so YouTube channels that bash women. People come here, hopefully for education. The lesson to be learned here is that men and women are different. We have different desires, different instincts, different expectations. It might not be very, you know, PC to talk about it, but that sucks because it means that men and women are entering into relationships with a completely different set of expectations as to how their partner's going to behave. People think that the other person's going to act like them, that they're going to feel the same way that they do. And it creates stupid arguments based on this misunderstanding of simple gender differences. The truth is, like the conclusion that study said, the fact that your partner might be, you know, mismatched in terms of your sexual desire, that might not be because there's anything wrong with your relationship. It might be completely natural. It's just based on gender. I hope that people find knowing that reassuring. It's not that your wife hates you or that she no longer finds you attractive or anything like that. The drop off in sexual desire might simply be because of these natural feminine specific, you know, reasons. But I also really like what the study says at the end of that conclusion, that just because it's typical doesn't necessarily mean that it's good. And so there's no need to be all doom and gloom, you know, just resign to your fate. If you're not happy with your sex life, just because it's kind of to be expected that this was going to occur, that doesn't mean that you need to be you know, satisfied, you need to put up with that. You can intervene, you can try and change things. That's absolutely fine. If you're unsatisfied, talk to your partner, you know, try and fix it. But knowing this information, hopefully you can have that conversation with her now without shaming her, making her feel like there is something wrong with her for not wanting to sleep with you more often. I know that it can feel personal and you can feel as though you've been tricked, you know, because she used to sleep with you all the time and, and now not so much anymore. But please just understand, if you were a woman, you'd be experiencing the exact same thing. Again, it's not that you shouldn't be trying to change things and asking for compromises from her or or whatever it might be. It's just have realistic expectations going into the relationship. You can tell her, I understand that it's quite natural for your sexual desire to drop off, but you also need to st understand that I'm a man and my sexual desire is exactly the same. And so we need to work together as a team to try and figure out a solution that works for both of us. That's the mature way to go about it. That's the emotionally healthy way to go about it. That's what a high quality man would do. Some women have the really unpleasant habit of commenting on the hotness of other men, even when they're in a relationship with a man or when they're on a date with a man. What's going on here? Now, obviously it's perfectly natural to just notice other attractive people, but there's actually very specific psychological reasons why a woman might be saying that to the man that she's with. And understanding these reasons is gonna be essential if you're gonna navigate those situations correctly. If you wanna know the answer to those questions, go and check out my latest Patreon video. My Patreon's just $5 a month. There's like 150 bonus videos you get instant access to. It's tremendous value. It's a great community over there. It's a great way to support the creator. I'd love to see you over there.